preview of 2020 predictions and they're going to be a paste about around two things the Pluto Saturn conjunction in Capricorn which you know I've chatted about before but I've got some new angles on that particularly in relation to the, econ the economy recession world economy banks cryptocurrency um, austerity and the energy crisis so that's what or the infrastructure crisis so that's going to be the momentum behind this I'll just recap quickly what I said about Saturn Pluto Saturn um, Pluto before and also mentioned that we're going to be talking about the Jupiter Pluto conjunction which is happening three times next year and would you believe we're also having a solar eclipse on the summer solstice which has a direct correlation to 1982 so we're going to be having a look at that as well so guys as you know thing, how things are with YouTube I'm not sure how long we'll be able to talk about these sort of subjects with total freedom so if you would please subscribe to me on Bitchute, also subscribe star. I am also on Patreon. I'll leave all the links below. Then that'll be fantastic. Of course, I greatly appreciate if you give me a thumbs up, if you liked it, leave a comment or subscribe, hitting the bell, and then you'll at least know when I upload a new video, which, as you know, tends to be kind of sporadic with me because I respond to whatever's going on and, uh, well, when the inspiration takes me. So, if you go back to my uh, world predictions for 2019-2020 when I talked in depth about the Saturn-Pluto conjunction was particularly in part two, the second video. I related it to the time of Martin Luther and his 95 thesis. So that's because that is the last time we had a Pluto Saturn conjunction in Capricorn was back then, sort of 400 plus years ago. And what I felt was so significant between them and now is that Martin Luther sort of, he helped break down the power that the Roman Catholic Church and the Holy Roman Empire had over Europe. And after that, uh, there was a lot more self-determination. Um, people took back power in their own communities, in their own localities. And I see that as being very similar to now in terms of what's happening with the European Union is people now are much more informed about it. They can see through it. They can see it for what it is. And they're beginning to rebel and wanting to draw power away instead of ceding all this power into this behemoth that is just authoritarian and totalitarian. And that was kind of what Martin Luther did with the church because he made sure the Bible was translated into the vernacular so that people had kind of a, a direct access to God via the Bible and they didn't need to go via these intermediaries of the church. You could kind of control them in some sort of you know, religious brainwashing, and they escaped from that, and hence we had the Reformation. There was quite a lot of turbulence going into that, as there will be as the European Union begins to crumble, and what I'm going to be talking about now is why that's just inevitable, because everything's just falling apart, and particularly economically is going to be the, the kind of engine that helps bring the whole thing down. What's also is important is, back in 1993, we had a Uranus-Neptune conjunction at about 18 degrees of Capricorn. It's very important in the EU's chart because the EU's chart dates back to 93, the time of Maastricht. And I see that that conjunction of Uranus-Neptune was so much about globalization, open borders, cultural Marxism, um, this, whole, this whole kind of neoliberal economics that we've been on, this unelected cabal liaising or colluding with big business to create a totalitarian society. I trace it back to 1993 and that conjunction to when this whole, I would call modern communism, picked up steam and started marching ahead and manifesting in real, in real within the EU and their political agenda. However, now we have the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, which represents a kind of common sense conservative capitalism, and there's a pushback. I think what the elites forgot is Newton's law. For every action, there must be an equal and opposite reaction. So while they've been shoving all their kind of neoliberal, socially liberal, cultural Marxist garbage down our throats, they never realized that at some point it was going to spin around and come back. With Brexit and Trump, we already saw that happening. But I see the Saturn-Pluto conjunction in Capricorn as, which is, by the way, happening at 22 degrees of Capricorn, which was basically a conjunction to that Neptune-Uranus one that happened in 1993, as a, a planetary symbolic manifestation of this clash. It's the kind of conservative, common-sense fight back, or as Steve Turley would call it, populist nationalist fight back, whatever, and a 
pushback against globalism and I think that's where they are going to crumble. We are going to tear down the structures but we won't do that alone. Their own incompetence will lead to the falling of the structures that have maintained them and one of them is the financial structure. So that's why a lot of uh, what we will be talking about is now economic but it's like not boring stuff so don't worry about that. I thought I might start with a little analogy and I must thank Morgoth's review which is an excellent vlog for this, this idea because he mentioned it and I wanted just to take it a little bit further. So for example you might you guys might be watching the drama called Chernobyl, a really good real life drama that they've made of that. So the situation at the time of Chernobyl you had the Soviet Union. The state was everything. It was ubiquitous. It was omnipotent. It gave you the cradle to grave care, but you didn't question it. It knew everything. It was all powerful. You know, people had to buy into this thing of the state was almost godlike. You didn't question its authority. If you did, you know, you, you, you were off to the gulag for re education. So the state had the supreme kind of presence in people's minds, in their lives, in reality. It was totalitarian. And to sustain that there was a layer of bureaucracy which created a sort of middle class and those bureaucrats helped sustain it. They were in denial about it. They helped cover up any problems to keep it going because they were benefiting. Most of the population were getting the raw end of the stick and they were really fed up with it in the main. They could see through it. They weren't stupid but they were downtrodden and oppressed by this level of bureaucracy. So when Chernobyl happened the first reaction of those in the administration, the bureaucracy, was to cover it up because the last thing they wanted was the state undermined. I mean, the state, they're supposed to know everything. They don't make mistakes. What Chernobyl showed is that they've been cutting corners, putting graphite tips on the rods. It showed the state was incompetent. They were doing everything on the cheap. They weren't really knowing what they were doing. They weren't so powerful as they made out. It kind of... It, 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 kind of what would you say it, it put out there everything that everyone had believed or instinctively known about it suddenly it was out there a big mistake that everyone could see that they couldn't deny well they tried to deny it they bought Geiger counters and then they lied about the results they poured concrete over it they were in total denial but afterwards Gorbachev admitted that this was one of the things that caused the Soviet Union to fall it was that total um, no one had any faith anymore in it everyone could see it for what it is a uh, a disaster. But now I see that we have our own Chernobyl going on in the financial sector, with pensions, in the with our infrastructure, and with crime. The whole neoliberal open borders globalist model is the the ideal and it's beginning to crumble. But the people in the bureaucracy and the middle class people who are all tied up in it, they're in denial about it. They really include the media. That's why just as they had to lie about Chernobyl and pretend it's not so bad, I think we are being lied to about the state of our economy, um, like I say, the state of pensions, the state of our infrastructure, because they don't want us to panic and they're lying to us to keep their dream of this neoliberal, globalist, cultural Marxist super state going. So there's a total analogy. If they admit how bad things are, then they have to admit failure. They have to admit that they, they were wrong, that their plan actually doesn't work and they're not quite ready to admit it yet, but the information is beginning to seep through. I think back to the financial crash in 20, 2008. I don't think it was the case that no one saw it coming or very few saw it coming and didn't predict it. I think they most of them absolutely knew that it was coming, but they were just trying to sort themselves out making us think it was all fine so we didn't panic. They wanted to get make sure they were okay before kind of hit the fan and everyone started to know about it and I think this is what's going to be done again. Now the thing about Saturn Pluto is say let's compare the economy to an old man. He's been drinking, he's been smoking, he's been eating donuts and burgers and totally not looking after his health and he's been dealing with it by taking you know antibiotics and painkillers and antacid. He's been papering over the cracks. But now he's reached the point where he's got to go cold turkey on everything, he's got to get really healthy because he can't stave it off anymore. And that is the point that we are going to reach in the world economy, particularly in Europe and with the EU and the way the setup is here in 2020. No more excuses, no more magic money tree, no more quantitative easing. A dramatic restructuring is going to be needed and there's no two ways about it. So people who say the end of austerity, I think we've probably only just begun the austerity. 
because I don't think there's a Mugabe money printing way that they can get out of this. And I think one of the things they're going to allow is, remember too big to fail with the banks? I think they are now going to allow a few banks to fail. One of them's Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank were already talking two weeks ago about moving all their dodgy assets to a bad bank in order to contain them. Uh, I find that a crazy strategy. How can you just make something like that go away by just moving it to the side? It's not like you have some rubbish in your kitchen bin. It doesn't smell very nice. You put it outside and then the bin men take it away and you don't have to think about it again. It's not quite the same, is it? But I think one of the key pivotal points will be the Spanish economy and a Spanish bank going, going to the wall. The other thing is with Italy talking about having a two-tier um, uh, currency. I think that'll totally undermine the EU and help bring uh, the, the euro and help bring that down. That's why I did a little broadcast on crypto because with Uranus in Taurus, Uranus being technology change, Taurus being money, I see cryptocurrency really taking off. Partly because the euro will become a currency no one can rely on, and if other if the European countries start going back to their own currencies, things could be extremely volatile in the currency market. Plus, I think we're possibly reaching the end of the, um, the petrodollar arrangement. That could mean currencies are going up and down and people go to Bitcoin almost like a safe haven. That's why I think cryptocurrency is definitely going to grow despite what a lot of people are saying because of the turbulence that will be coming in all the financial markets. So, the key is with Saturn Pluto is the game's up, guys. The game's up. No more pretense. No more trying to cover things up. No more supporting bad banks and bad practices. There's going to be have, have to be a shake-up of the whole system, and we'll see that starting next year. And, of course, the ramifications will be wide, but I definitely think it, it, it's, it's crazy to say that, you know, that a magic money tree and they can make it all go away. I talked about the solar eclipse happening on the summer solstice. That happened in 1982. There was also a Saturn-Pluto conjunction in 1982, not in Capricorn, in Libra, and a deep recession hit around that time. Although with uh, Reagan-Thatcher economics, they kind of got their way out of it. But this time, I think the reception will be deep, like it was in 1982, but much, much more sustained. But especially in Europe, um, possibly America might squeak out a little light on it, possibly because the way Trump is handling the, econ the economy there with less regulation. I think in Europe everything's become far too bureaucratic, especially in France, and the bureaucracy doesn't make money. A free enterprise society creates productivity, creates welfare, creates, creates wealth. Um, all this bureaucracy, all everything becoming more and more administrative and the government becoming bigger and bigger and involved in more and more, all it does is decrease productivity and doesn't create wealth and they're going to have to deal with that problem. But thanks to Paul Keith, who sent me a very interesting video where they talked about this magic money tree. In the short term, if they are printing money, I think that ties in to another theme I'm, se I'm seeing and that is the, the sidelining of the elderly. Now, Saturn Pluto represents the elderly. Uranus Neptune represents the youth. And I think we're going to see a clash of the ages. You already see this with Brexit, with the young people sort of, oh, they've stolen our future. All these old codger little Englanders, senile old people who are over 60 and don't know what they're talking about. They've stolen, you know, all these pejoratives towards the elderly. Even on Sky News, when they were talking about the TV license, um, the, the lady was saying, Oh, why do the elderly are not a special group? They do not need free TV licenses. They need to prove they need some. Why do people who've paid taxes all their life have to prove they need one? I think it goes without saying that people elderly are more likely to have health issues, possibly be disabled or housebound or or lonely. And but this woman doesn't regard any of those. And as far as she's concerned, it's not a protected group. And you can guarantee, you've already guessed she's a leftist. She was probably from the Guardian perfect attitude of the left towards the elderly. I need not mention Polly Toynbee saying, oh well so many Brexiteers have now died if we have another referendum, you know, cheering on the deaths of people so she can get her political way. It's disgusting but it says a lot about the way they are thinking and I think with uh, a lot of, if they do start printing money in the short term, what that's doing is creating inflation so that only if you have a job that's keeping up with inflation or if you're on benefits and welfare and the government keep giving you money, you can keep abreast of it. But for the elderly who are on fixed pensions and whose shares might not be doing well even if they have some assets, 
it's eroding their wealth and it almost is creating a redistribution because if they're having to sell their homes in order to fund you know the rest of their retirement what does that mean it means a lot more properties come in the market and they can redress this balance that the young people are, are complaining about so i do see this is all a clash of the old and the young and the, and the government can manipulate that actually from the top even without direct kind of redistribution just by by policies like that Okay, so I already talked about the, the boost to Bitcoin. The one um, problem with Bitcoin, I mentioned on my Bitcoin video, that uh, Bitcoin is permissionless, it's non-confiscatable. However, there are gatekeepers like Coinbase, because you usually have to belong to a, a platform like Coinbase or eToro, many others, in order to buy your Bitcoin. And I know Milo was saying that he was not able to join Coinbase. They kept saying, oh, sorry, your, your email email doesn't work or that's not the correct email whereas he was pretty sure that he's on some sort of list and is being denied access but I do see ways emerging around that where for a high commission people are exchanging Bitcoin on PayPal and, and other forums so there is a way around this but somehow the problem with Bitcoin although it is kind of non-confiscatable it's permissionless it's decentralized until they find far more ways of people getting access to it, there are still gatekeepers who can creep in and manipulate the system to make it, uh, you know, less ethical for the elites to kind of put a spoke in the wheels. The other thing I was going to want to talk about, so yes, banks extremely dodgy, economies in lots of trouble, and because of the economic pressure, that is going to be ultimately, ultimately what brings down the EU project. A little bit of an aside, last time there was a Jupiter-Pluto conjunction in... Capricorn, there was a plague, the bubonic plague broke out in St. Petersburg and also Moscow, a very big thing in Russia. And you know when I did my yearly predictions at the beginning of the year, I talked about China and thinking a possible plague breaking out there. Now of course China, but like Chernobyl, they'll probably keep that information suppressed. They wouldn't want to get that out, so we wouldn't necessarily know about it until it reached kind of a critical mass that they couldn't deny. But it's also worth thinking about in Africa at the moment, they are having an, the biggest Ebola outbreak since the one that they had in 2014, and yet no one's talking about it. It was constantly in the news in 2014, now it doesn't make the news at all. So we have Ebola in Africa, possibly something happening in China, and this chart linked to the bubonic plague outbreak. So I'm wondering next year if there is going to be some sort of mass health scare. Um, so guys, just get your colloidal silver, get your vitamin D in and uh, keep up your immune system because ultimately that's the best way to reduce those things. So I'd say definitely high doses, 5,000 of vitamin D3, uh, natural vitamin D3 if you can, um, every day. And definitely colloidal silver is a topical throat spray. It's, it's a good way. Well, that, that's kind of the direction on a totally different topic, of course, that I might go in. in. Now, I also wanted to say that I think they're in denial in Europe over the state of the pensions. I think they've lied to us and said we need all these unskilled migrants coming in in order to pay into the pension pot. But I think what they haven't been telling us is, one, these unskilled migrants are basically working in very, very low paid jobs. The productivity is not as high and a lot of them aren't actually in employment. So it's really, it's a net drain because most people are having to be catered for via the benefit system. I note that Leo Varadkar was saying that he, he thinks it would be ideal to increase the population of Waterford by three or I think it was even by four, but it was definitely by a large number, like three or four. And I thought, well, where, what jobs are those people going to be doing? Because it seems to say in isolation, odd if you say in isolation, oh, how great it is to increase a population of a town. If there's no jobs, that seems an odd thing to say. If there are so many jobs in Watford, then, you, then naturally people would flock there to live, wouldn't they? So it seems that they are hell-bent on increasing population, but at the same time, not increasing jobs. And as you know, they're not increasing services. Just last week they were reporting on Sky that three GP surgeries in the UK close down every week. That is an incredible statistic bearing in mind the population increase and they keep telling us how population will grow and how great it is but they're not even dealing with things like GPs. So I think we're reaching a crisis in pensions where the big earners, like if we look back to 1982, because that was a time, it was the time the baby boomers, right, they were incredibly productive group of people that started businesses that created wealth and they were coming into their prime round about that time which was why they sort of avoided such a deep recession but now we don't have that group with a lot of elderly people and the new batch of people coming through or immigrating are people who are generally very low skilled and who are not 
potentially even finding work. So there's, that's the Chernobyl we're at now, is it's a lie that this mass immigration is working and contributing to pensions. There's a lie that the state and the welfare state in all these European countries is going to be able to survive. It's at breaking point, it's creaking. I think it's probably a lot worse than we think. It's not going to be able to survive and that's also a reality that they're going to face. The final thing I wanted to talk about was the energy crisis.